Good day and uh, welcome to Godly Thoughts Ministries. Welcome to our Sunday service. Today we are talking about submitting yourself to the will of God. Submitting yourself to the Holy Spirit so that he can use you and do all those mighty works you fantasize about. So that he can use you for his purposes. When you submit yourself to the will of God, that is where the power really is. That is where God starts really using you. That is where God starts really using you for good works. But if you are not submitting yourself to God, you cannot be used. So I want us to pray so that God can help us to understand what is to submit ourselves to the will of God so that we don't waste our time imagining how God can work, imagining how God will use us, but actually being used by God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to submit to you and to your will. Help us to submit to your Holy Spirit. He knows exactly where he wants to use us and how he wants to use us. So that we don't waste time trying to imitate other people. So that we don't waste time trying to run other people's races, but we run the race you set for us according to your divine perfect, perfect and pleasing will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Child of God, I want to tell you the truth. If you want to be used by the Holy Spirit in a humongous and amazing way, you must therefore submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example that is so simple. If a car has got a faulty steering wheel, you try to use it to turn it right, but it turns left. You try to use it to turn left, but it turns right. It's either you are going to park that car altogether, or if you try using it, you will get into a massive car accident. Because submitting yourself to God means allowing God to direct you in how he wants to use you. It means if God has called you to encourage others in church, you don't go to Ghana to look for the prophetic unction because it is more popular and a lot of people have it and it is what you want. Submitting yourself to God means allowing the Holy Spirit to use you as he wishes. James 4 verse 7. Can you read it? It says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Brothers and sisters, before you can even think of defeating the evil one, you must consider this. Am I fully submitted to the will of God? Sometimes in order to defeat the devil, you have to give a certain amount of money to a suffering person. Sometimes in order to defeat the devil, you have to fast for a certain number of days. Sometimes in order to defeat the devil, you have to... Praise the Lord in a certain way. Sometimes you even have to wake up at a certain time of the night and pray. Submitting yourself to God is the secret to successfully working with the Holy Spirit. Being used of God is all to do with learning to submit, therefore, your will to the will of the Father. Jesus says in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let your will be done. Not my will. In other words, Father, this is very hard for me. But I will still do what you tell me to do, not what I want. Sometimes the marriage is struggling because the partners are not submitting. When God says, do not argue back. When the husband says some harsh words and God says do not respond, do not talk back, the marriage is saved. Sometimes God wants to bless you with that child you are really praying for, but you are not submitting to the will of God. You have got your own plan. The trouble that we have in the church is that we already have got a template that we want to follow. We already have a desire that we want to follow. However, that desire is confirmed conflicting with the will of God and therefore we find ourselves clashing head on with the will of God and nothing happens. The Holy Spirit is saying turn today's 
a, 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 a service into an intercessory service where you pray for those who are lost. But the pastor already wanted to preach tithe and offering. So he moves forward and he preaches tithe and offering. And nothing happens. No one gives any tithe. No one gives any offering. And he is further frustrated. Submitting yourself to the will of God means being zombified. Yes, in so many cases, you say, God, I have my will, but I'm going to toss that into the bin. I'm allowing your will to dominate mine. You are not a robot, but you're working hand in glove with God. God is simply using you to fulfill his purpose. Now, I'm going to read another scripture. Romans 12 verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove what is that good, perfect, and pleasing will of God. Now, whenever we talk about the will of God, people are worried. People are concerned that I wanted to marry Nancy. I wanted to marry John. I wanted to marry Joshua. I wanted to marry Jacob. I wanted to marry such and such. Will not God divert me because this person is perfect? I am afraid of allowing God to tell me what he wants for me in case it is opposite to what I know is good for me. I wanted to be in marketing. What if God says I must be in accounting? But the Bible tells us that when our minds do not confirm, when our minds are not conforming to the will of the, of the to the way to the pattern of the world, when our minds are not conforming to the pattern of the world, that is when we are therefore able to prove what is that good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. The trouble, children of God, is that the pattern of the world seems perfect. Marketing seems to be the well-paying job than accounting. <clears throat> Nancy seems to be the more beautiful girl than, 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 than Ruth. Now, I wanted to go with this girl because I know it's better for me. But you don't know the will of God. The will of God for you is good, perfect, and pleasing. But the problem is that you don't trust now God enough to allow his will to unfold in your life. You want your will, your rehearsed will, according to what others are doing, according to set trends which you are seeing, according to patterns which you think are perfect. You want your will according to what you think is better to prevail. Now the problem is that your will is guided by ignorance. The patterns of the world are in the dark. They are led by ignorance people in the world. So many people rush to invest in copper and then copper does not perform well on the stock markets. Then you lose everything. When God shows you a way to take, it always seems wrong according to the present economic things. People were all going to Egypt because there was a famine in Canaan in the land where Isaac was residing. But the Lord says to Isaac, remain behind, farm in the valley and you shall harvest a hundred fold. It doesn't make any sense. Why didn't others farm in the valley? God, you're telling me to farm in the valley. Why didn't others tell me to farm in the valley? The Bible says, but Isaac dug up his father's wells. He farmed where God told him to farm and he harvested a hundredfold. The plan of God seems to be in consistent conflict with the plans of man. You want to fast for money. God is saying, instead, fast for the lost that they may come to my house. Then you say, no God, how can I pray for people who are lost when I don't have food in my house? I need food in my house. But God's plan, which does not make any sense to you, his will is perfect, pleasing, and good. Now I'm going to read from Hebrews 10 verse 36. It says, for you have need of patience. So that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now the promises of God are many. God promises you shelter. 
God promises you protection, security. God promises to provide for you. God promises you eternal life. God promises to love you. But after you have done the will of God, will you receive that promise? The problem with the, uh, with the people is that we are plastic. Plastic does not bend properly. It, it breaks. We come before God with rehearsed things. Things that we believe are good for us. After examining how the world is working, after examining how others are doing it, after studying and examining trends in the world, you then come to the conclusion, this is the best way to go. India is the country to go right now if you are sick. China is the country to go now if you want to hold uh, uh, many groceries or whatever it is. South Africa is the country to go if you want this and that. God says remain and work on this or work on that. Abraham had lived so many years and he was aging. And he could see that his wife has, had reached menopause stage and gone comfortably past the menopause stage. And Abraham became curious. He said to God, Lord, how can I be happy when Eliezer, this stranger who is my servant, is the one who shall inherit my property? The child which you promised me I don't have. He is talking to the creator that uh, Sarah's eggs have, have withered away. He forgets that the creator can create another egg at a time he has <laughs> appointed. The mother of Jesus, Mary, said, How can this be since I have not known any man? When the angel says, when the Lord says to her, You shall have a child. It's, she says, How can this be since I have not known any man? The will of God has got a bit. The, will, the plan of God and the will of God are one and the same thing in many ways. He says, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and an expected future. He said, Lord, I don't understand. I'm not getting any job. I'm applying. I'm not getting any job. Who told you the plan of God will involve you going to get that job? I'm not saying sit. I'm saying trust God for his plan. It may be different from what you had in mind. I remember Daniel, he was a prince. They were captured by Babylonian, Babylonians and taken into captivity. And as long as you are a slave in captivity, it's over for you. Slaves are subjected to the worst kind of treatment. And when they arrive there as slaves, Daniel trusted the will of God. He knows that even in captivity, God can make something work for me. And so at some point, the king has a dream. And the king calls all the witches and all those people, the soothsayers and the Chaldeans and workers of magic to tell him his dream. And the king is so frustrated because he knew he had a dream, but he could not remember the nitty gritties, the details of the dream. Now Daniel, who was in captivity, is called upon to interpret the dream. He interprets the dream and immediately while in captivity, Daniel is promoted. Look, it doesn't matter they took your name and put it in a clay pot in captivity. It doesn't matter they went to, to witch doctors and to white garment prophets and they did rituals against you. While you are in captivity, you will exceed in an area where others are failing. Daniel was promoted in captivity. Look, sometimes they are going to bind your marriage. Sometimes they are going to fight your life. Sometimes they are going to cast you into trouble sometimes in the hope of putting you in captivity. But God comes up with a plan. Something that they which were in captivity could not do. They tried to interpret the dream, but they failed. They even said to the king, King, no one can tell you a dream. You have to tell us the dream first. No one can interpret a dream you have not told us. But Daniel could, because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Concentrate on the Holy Spirit while you are in captivity, because in that same captivity, God is going to prove his power. They have gone to witch doctors. 
leaders. They have successfully tied up their, 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 their great cloth with your name inside. They have buried it under a grave. They have already done something to you while you were young. Every girl in the family is going through it. Every boy in the family is going through it. You are in captivity, but you trust the Lord. The will of God is good, perfect, and pleasing. Those who do the will of God are the ones who receive the promise. The same happens with Jacob. He is now accused in the house of Potiphar. He is taken and cast into prison. And for three years he is in prison. For a long time he is in prison. And he wonders what the plan of God is. But while he was in prison... Two officials from the king's table had a dream and he interpreted the dream. Afterwards, the rest is history. Prioritize the will of God. The biggest problem we have is we try to jump, we try to circumvent the will of God and look for something that everyone else is doing. Your success is not tied to what everyone else is doing. Everyone else may be selling tomatoes, but that's not how you are going to wear to succeed. You are going to succeed only if you seek the will of God. Listen to this. 1 Peter 4 verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to well-doing as to a faithful creator. Those who suffer according to the will of God. It sounds wrong, doesn't it? How can you suffer according to the will of God? Yes, your suffering sometimes can be according to the will of God. Jesus says to God, Father, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours, to be, yours be done. And then the will of God was done. What was the will of God? He was taken, accused, betrayed, beaten, nailed to the cross. All which was part of the will of God. And he even died. All which was according to the will of God. Joseph was taken, uh, uh, betrayed, cast into prison according to the will of God. A fire was set for Nebuchadnezzar, Shadrach and Mishin according to the will of God. Now, the problem we have is that we begin to bind instead of praying and saying, Lord, what is happening? Is this your will? Something ba bad starts happening. Someone rushes to say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Can you bind God? If it is God who is doing his will in your life, yes, sometimes the business can close according to the will of God. Yes, sometimes the child can get terribly sick according to the will of God. At one point, they saw someone who was born blind and they asked Jesus, who sinned, the father or the mother of this person? And Jesus said, this was done so that glory may be given to God. Which means the suffering of this person was according to the will of God. Ah, but does God want us to suffer? God is not concerned about suffering or pleasure. He is concerned about the lessons we learn. We shall be our portion for eternity. The lessons we learn, we shall make us more refined for eternity. If you have to go through the fire... He says, when you go through the fire, I will be with you. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. Which means it is his will for you to go through the fire and to go through the water. But he will be with you. Focus on him and you will see what is that good, perfect and pleasing will. Now, I want to conclude by reading from Psalm 143 verse 10. It says, teach me to do your will. Now, take note of this. David does not say, teach me to know your will. Because over time, a lot of us know God's will. You know that God has called you to do his work. This is his will. But you try to circumvent it. You try to turn it around according to the happenings that are in your life. But the problem is that things won't go exactly as planned. If, you, if God wanted you to do his work, but then you want money, but then you want fame, but then you want a semblance of what you think is normal and you run away from God's will. Whatever compromised thing you end up with is worse. It is not better. The will of God is perfect and pleasing. In one day, God can turn around your life. Why are you so impatient to think that God has lost it? Psalms 143 verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. His will is for you to walk in uprightness. And even though his will may be painful, his spirit is good. 
I want to remind you of something that happened when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. Mark 1 verse 9 when he was baptized, the heavens opened, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon him like in the form of a dove and it landed upon Jesus. And God says the most remarkable things about Jesus. This is my son with whom I am well, well pleased. Listen to him. This is my son. I'm well pleased with him. Listen to him. But afterwards, the Bible says, but the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Some temptations can be part of God's plan. Don't look at the temptation. Continue focusing on God. Ask him, Lord, is this your will? If God says it's not my will, bind the devil. Resist the devil and you'll flee away. When the Lord says it is my will, you say, Father, teach me to do your will. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Of uprightness. What must I repent of? What must I learn from this? What must I take from this? Help me, Lord God. Is it patience? Is it forgiveness? Is it love? Help me to learn whatever it is I must learn. When you allow the will of God to prevail in your life, my brother, my sister, life begins to make sense. His purpose begins to make sense for you. But when you try to Keep on forcing God to go your way, to follow your will, to do things which please you. You realize that you were a blind trying to lead a person with open eyes. When a car steering wheel keeps on malfunctioning, the car will be parked no matter how beautiful it is. God will work with an educated person who will listen to him over an educated person. God will take a person with no theological degree and make them a pastor if they will do his will. As opposed to a person who is a doctor in theology who does not listen to the will of God. Are you going to listen to the will of God? Let me pray for the Holy Spirit to teach you to do his will because his spirit is good and his, perfect, his will is perfect, pleasing and good. Let me pray. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Teach us to do your will, Holy Spirit. Your will is good for us. Your will is perfect. But your will is so different from what the world is doing. Your will is so different from what we want. Your will is so different from what we planned going, growing up. Your will is so different from what our parents wanted for us. Your will is so different from what the rest of our friends are doing. But your will is good, perfect, and pleasing. Father, help us to not conform to the patterns of this world, but to do that new thing you want to do in our family through you, through your spirit. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am Minister T.D. Mkana and I want to tell you the truth. It was the will of God for you to listen to this message and I pray that you share it with others. May the Lord bless you in all that you do. Amen.